Aside from being able to connect our resistors in series with respect to one another, we can also connect them in parallel as shown in the following diagram. So let's suppose we have a closed electric circuit as shown and we place a battery into our electric circuit so that we have an electric potential difference. Now as a result of that electric potential difference, our electric current will begin to flow from the positive end to the negative end of our electrode as shown by the following arrow. So essentially when our electric current comes in to this intersection on side A, that electric current will split into three different electric currents. So some of that given by I1 will go through resistor R1. Some of that given by I2 will go through a resistor given by R2 and the rest of that electric current that splits, namely I3, will go through the final resistor given by R3. So we have these three resistors which are connected in parallel with respect to one another. Now, because these resistors don't actually consume any of that electric charge, that basically means we have the conservation of electric charge. So we have the current that is going into that intersection is equal to the current that is coming out of that same intersection. So if we place our resistors in parallel, we get the following conservation equation. The total electric current given by I that's going into our intersection at point A is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So once again, the current that enters the intersection at side A will split into three different electric currents given by I1, I2, and I3. Now because electric charge is always conserved, we see that the current that flows into our intersection at this intersection here is equal to the current that flows out of our intersection. Now, whenever we're placing resistors in parallel with respect to one another, the voltage across each resistor is exactly the same. In fact, in this case, the voltage is equal to the voltage across our battery source. So the voltage across R1, R2, and R3 is equal to the voltage across our battery given by V. Now let's recall Ohm's law. Ohm's law essentially states that the voltage across a resistor is equal to the product of the resistance and the electric current that passes through that resistor and that means we have the following three equations. So we have V equals IR, we can rearrange our equation and solve for I. So we see I1, the electric current that passes resistor 1 is equal to the voltage which is the voltage of the battery divided by R1, the resistance on our resistor 1. Likewise I2 is equal to V divided by R2 and I3 is equal to V divided by R3. Now let's move on to the following step in which we're going to calculate, we're going to try to determine the single equivalent resistor that will replace these three resistors which are in parallel with respect to one another. That is, we're looking for a resistor that will draw the same exact quantity of electric current as these three resistors. So let's begin with Ohm's law. So once again we're looking for a resistor that has a quantity of resistance that will draw the same amount of electric charge as these three resistors. So we're looking for voltage is equal to I multiplied by R EQ where EQ stands for that equivalent resistance that we're looking for. So let's take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for I. So I is equal to the voltage across that resistor divided by the quantity of resistance. Now we know from this equation I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Now from this equation I is equal to V divided by REQ. I1 is equal to this, I2 is equal to this, and I3 is equal to this. So we 
we get the following equation. So, notice we have voltage on the, at the numerator for each one of these terms. So that means if we divide both sides by the voltage, that voltage will cancel and we're left with the following equation. So this equation gives us the resistance of that single equivalent resistor that will replace all these resistors which are connected in parallel with respect to one another. So 1 divided by the resistance we're looking for is equal to 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus 1 divided by R3.